So 3.4 is about the stages of data analysis. And you need to know what these different stages are, what happens at each stage, and the whole process, really, of um, um, analyzing data that organizations, businesses go through. So let's have a quick look. So let's imagine we are thinking about building a new app a system. So if we take the government's current test and trace system that they've put in place to try and find out if anyone has um, had symptoms of COVID, if they've come into contact with anybody that's got COVID, um, and you know, then they can warn other people and keep a, a lid on this virus. So the first stage, number one, is, is we need to identify the need. Well, what, what do we need? Well, we need a system that's going to track who's got COVID and who they've been in contact with so we can contact those people so that they can then avoid contacting other people and passing this virus on. So we need, we need an app that's going to help us keep track and uh, control what's going on with this whole COVID virus. So the first stage is what is it we need to know and... What do we want to find out to see whether it's even doable? The second stage is then to define the scope of the project. So this is where we start to think about, well, who's going to be involved in this? It's a COVID test and trace system. Is it the NHS? Is it the public? GPs? Uh, is, it, is it nurses in GPs, practitioners? Who's going to be involved in the system? Who's going to make that app? How long is it likely to take? How much is it going to cost? Are there any constraints? Are there any things that we need to consider that might stop us from properly developing this product, this app, this system? The third stage is to identify the sources. So where are we going to get the information from to help us put this system together? So we might survey people and ask them, you know, if there was an app, would you download it? Do we have... Um, uh, any idea about what kind of devices people are using so we know what to develop for? Do we have any figures of any apps that have been successful in the past? Are there any other countries that have developed similar systems? Can we have a look and see what worked and didn't work for those guys? Can we do some market research to find out if it's even a viable option? Then we think about, well, what are the best sources? So step four is we look to see of all the information we've identified at step three, which ones are going to be the most useful for us and which ones are probably just going to make things a bit muddy. So which source is the most accurate and the most useful for us moving forward? And then we analyze this information from these sources and we select the best tool for the job. We don't want to waste time uh, not using the best tools so we don't get the best results in the fastest time. So we can spend time setting up our spreadsheets. We can sort the data. We can create graphs and charts. So what's the best tool to create graphs and charts and sort the data and come up with these trends and so on? So we need to think about what's the best tool for the job. Once we've selected the tool, we then go through the process of cleaning the data, of laying out the data, uh, in tables, perhaps, so we can do some comparisons. We sort the data, we can search the data, we can filter out data that isn't useful to us. We can then create graphs, we can create charts, we can do some comparisons, and we can have the data in a format that makes some sense and is easy to understand. Once we've got that, the final two stages, which I've squished together here in step seven, is, well, we store this data somewhere, obviously, we record it in a format that makes some sense to us, and then we share it. So we might write a report, including the charts and the graphs and the trends and the location mapping and so on. We might then email that or post it to the person who needs to see it. We might create a presentation and then deliver it to the stakeholders. We might deliver it to the NHS or we might deliver it to the government. And then what we do is we say, look, we... We went and we asked these people and we talked to all the uh, relevant um, people involved in the process. We've identified the sources, we've analysed the data and we think this is uh, a project that's worth doing and that you know this is 
uh, how we think it might look and how much we think it might cost and how uh, much it, you know, uh, in, in terms of time, how long it will take and so on. So it's all about thinking through what happens first, second, third, you know, and so on. What are the stages of data analysis that organizations go through? So an exam question. It's a six mark question. What is uh, the importance of the identify the need phase of data analysis? Now, we know that there are eight phases. Uh, there are eight stages of data analysis. And this question could have basically pulled out any one of these, or it could have asked you to talk about all eight of them. This particular one is saying that the identify the need stage is what we need to focus on. And it's asking us what's important about this particular phase of data analysis. And well, it's the beginning stage, isn't it? So if you get this bit wrong, everything that follows is also going to be wrong. So here are some of the answers to the question that the exam board published in the mark scheme. Well, first of all, the points marking approach is that just simply means that you're going to get one mark for everything you say in your answer that is, is an accurate response. So we can see here, the first thing we need to think about is, is this identifying the need stage is basically about finding out what information is needed and defining specifically what that need is. So that would get you two marks. And then it goes on to explain that if this isn't defined correctly, then all the information that we collect in the next stages isn't the information that we need to get the job done. Therefore, the whole process that we just went through was a waste of time. And the information we've collected isn't any good to us. So before we get to the data analysis stage, we need to make sure that what we're actually doing at that point is useful to us and the data that we're analyzing has been correctly defined. Otherwise, everybody's just wasting their time. If it's defined incorrectly, then all the analysis that we do, all of the charts and the graphs and the tables and the comparisons and the lines for showing the trends and so on, that, that's all wrong. It's just bad information at the beginning leads to obviously bad information at the end. If the data you collect doesn't meet your need, then what you end up with at the end after the processing has taken place is equally worthless to you. It's the old garbage in, garbage out that we hear in you know computing language all the time. And if you've come up with any other valid suggestion that kind of answers this question about why is it important to identify the need first, then that will get you, uh, you know, a mark for that question. So that's basically um, the whole of this topic. So it's understanding what these different stages of analysis are, how they link together, how they follow on from each other, and how if you get one stage wrong, everything that kind of follows on from it um, is, is going to be, uh, you know, inaccurate.